Alrighty, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. You're watching the daily series of Wide Day MMA where I give you my thoughts but more importantly ask for yours as the MMA community is so fast moving and I can't keep up with it all by myself. And today we're going to be recapping UFC Vegas 75. Was it 75? UFC Fight Night Vittori versus Cannoneer in an outstanding performance by Jared Cannoneer. We'll talk about multiple fights on the card, including the main event, of course, and go over our thoughts. But more importantly, like I said earlier, ask your thoughts because that's what we do here on Wada MMA. Now, if this is something that sounds pretty interesting to you, then go ahead and leave a like on this video and don't forget to subscribe. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. Alrighty, so talking about the main event first, Jerry Cannonier versus Marvel Vittori. It's true. Okay, we, we just confirmed it. Black doesn't crack, right? <laughs> so, Jerry Cannonier is 39 years of age. He was facing off against the 29 year old Marvin Vittori. And age was a big factor that I was looking at when breaking down this fight for my predictions because, you know, Father Time is undefeated and it was hard to determine if Cannoneer was going to be the same Cannoneer or not so it seemed like his chin was a little bit testy especially when he was getting hit in that southpaw stance right he was getting clipped by jabs that were kind of getting his legs wobbly and stuff like that but something more important is that Jerry Cannoneer is still learning if you look at this fight compared to his Israel Adesanya fight there's major improvements with the way he's landing his hand and he talked about it leading into this fight he said that he's gotten a lot better at actually landing his hands rather than just throwing them right we saw him wing a couple shots but if you noticed in that fight the shots that he was loading up on the shots that he was uh overthrowing those were the shots that he was missing whenever he was just touching marvin vittori he was landing he was hurting him uh he was not discriminating he was going to the body everything we said that jared kennedy needed to do to win this fight he did he shut down the legs of Marvin Vittori by kicking the legs and he did it very interestingly by going to Southpaw, right? With that Southpaw versus Southpaw stance is similar to Orthodox versus Orthodox to where that lead leg is there for your back leg to keep chopping down on, right? So that's what he was setting up in Southpaw. And then every time he would go to Orthodox, that's when he was looking for that right hand and uh, he was just doing a way better job than Vittori at getting ahead of him, at backing him up and at being creative. That was creative. Nobody expected Jared Cannonier to go southpaw. In order to win this fight, Jared Cannonier needed to shut down the legs of Marvin Vittori. He needed to not discriminate going to the body or the head, which he didn't. Every time he hurt Marvin Vittori, he would go right back to the body, and that's what kind of made Marvin Vittori wither. It wasn't the head damage. The head damage, yeah, it wobbled him and stuff like that, but he was kind of waiting to recover. And then Jared Cannonier would go to the body, and that's what was taking his gas tank. That's what was taking his will to keep fighting for the most part. Marvin Vittori, he's a tough son of a gun, though. He kept fighting. He's a savage. All the praise in the world for him being able to stay in that fight and take that kind of damage. And his chin is ridiculous but again to glorify cannoneer's performance it's everything he needed to do not only that but be creative john crouch is one of the best coaches in the game at the mma lab and he set up a perfect game plan of switching to attack the lead leg going back to orthodox to drop that right hand and even though marvin vittori's coach knew that it was coming he said watch out for the right hand circle away from it and all that stuff even if he was circling away from it Jared would go southpaw he would kick the leg force him back the other way go orthodox and then set up the right hand again and it was it was just too much for Marvin Vittori Marvin Vittori in order for him to win he needed to go forward uh, we talked about that we not talked about him using his jab to come forward in triples and in quadruples not just loading up on that backhand or popping that backhand out there like he's used to doing which is kind of what he did now he hurt Jared a couple of times and when Jared went southpaw that's especially when he was catching him with the hooks and with even with the jabs that were staggering him and I thought that that was very important and I thought he still should have used that jab even in opposite stances when whenever it was southpaw versus orthodox he definitely should have been using that jab to get in that way he could back jared Cannonier up however that's not what happened uh he wasn't able to do that he wasn't he didn't mix in his wrestling at all which i thought was a huge error going against jared Cannonier. because yes he has very good takedown defense but make him use it make him tire those muscles out make him 
fatigue himself trying to defend your takedowns, right? So I think there was some errors that Marvin Vittori did. I think he was maybe trying to prove something in the striking department. But again, to go back to Jerry Cannonier, he did everything he was supposed to do. And he looked absolutely amazing, breaking the significant strike total numbers. He broke the record for it in middleweight. I'm pretty sure Max still has the record in just all of fighters. But in middleweight, he broke the record. Jared Kennanier is an absolute animal, and the way he was doing it was just by touching. Every time he loaded up, he missed, but when he would just touch Marvin Vittori with that right hand, when he would just use his strikes to get in and then land, it was just perfect. It was set up, and I think, honestly, this, this is kind of what I was expecting him to do against Israel Adesanya. I didn't think he was going to win that fight, right? Obviously, Izzy is the best in the division, right? But I thought that he would use the leg kicks to shut it down. He would uh, go high with the head kicks, which he could have done against Marvin Vittori. That probably would have gotten him the finish going high. But and then when he's using his hands, start off low and then finish high. Izzy, he moves away. He leaves his legs behind, right? That's when you attack his legs when he stands in a check. That's when you use your hands to set up bigger shots, right? But uh, I think Izzy checking his early leg kicks and giving him leg kicks himself, that stopped a lot of Jared's momentum. And that's what kind of slowed him down and confused him in that fight, made him a little bit more hesitant. But he's also gotten a lot better at coming forward, at coming forward at angles, not just straight on. And I think that's one of the big improvements he made from that Israel fight to this Marvin fight. And I think, honestly, right now, would probably be the best chance for him to get that rematch because I think that god he's just he was on a roll he was on a roll he was in his flow state and I think that he made the exact adjustments he needs to make in order to fight a guy like Israel Adesanya however I think that the UFC is not going to do that because he wasn't sturdy enough with that call out if he just called him out and said that give me him again and I'm gonna kill him <laughs> I think that that would be you know that would, the UFC would have to do it but Drikas versus Robert Whitaker. The winner of that is probably going to be next. Um, and Jared, he could either fill in, he could step in if someone pulls out. He could fight a guy like Hamzat Chemaev, which could be a number one contender. That would be, huh, that would be exciting, right? I don't know where he goes next from here. Uh, I know he either wants one more to get to the title or a title shot next. And I'm glad he gave himself those options. I just think he could have done a little better with the color. I think Dana, after that performance maybe would have even given him a title shot so that's what i have to say about that matchup what do you guys think jerry cannonier goes from here on out but let's talk about the rest of the card so on the prelims we had alessandro costa another guy from team lobo one of their grappling coaches along with chris lopez and he's a flyweight this guy just how awesome was he right he ends up knocking the guy out second round and then praises Alexa Grasso, Irene Aldana for his boxing improvements. He only spars with girls, which is very interesting because a lot of guys think, oh, why would I want to spar with girls? But girls, a lot of times, teach you way better technique than going with guys. A lot of times with guys, your ego gets involved, your your pride gets involved, and, and a lot of people just try to muscle things through or show extra toughness. And, you know, it's a it's an ego game, but with girls, you're not trying to hurt them, right? You're just trying to beat them. And so it forces you to use more technique. It forces you to be smarter with the way you approach things. It forces you to be able to control what you're doing. And I think that it was very cool for him to admit that and to, you know, kind of share that with the world for people who don't know. So that was awesome to see. I want to see where he goes next from here because I believe he was coming off a loss, but he's like 7-1 and one or 8-1 and one now in his last 9 or 8 fights. So uh, that'll be interesting to see where he goes next. Nicholas Dalby had a very good performance against uh, Salikov. That was a, just a kickboxing fight, but he was able to mix in the grappling as well after hurting Salikov a couple of times. And I think that's what helped get him to win. Nicholas Dalby, he's a little old for, to be this young in his UFC career, but he's proven time and time again that he deserves to be here. And, uh, you know, it might be time to, to get him a top 15, top 20 fight. Pat Sabatini took down and mauled Lucas Almeida. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming, but he did it. He took him down. He gave him no room. He was doing all the right things. He fatigued him. He forced him to fight even more. Took him into that second round. Took him down again. His wrestling was there. His submissions were there. I want to see a little bit more of his striking, but from that point of view, I mean, Jesus. He's, he's another threat in this lightweight division. 
Armin Petrosian versus Christian Leroy Duncan was a very interesting fight. I like the way that Christian Leroy Duncan throws his kicks. That it's very interesting the way he sets it up. Uh, it's actually something I like to do a little bit myself. However, he didn't seem all there with the hands. Uh, it, it seemed like he was lacking a lot of boxing experience and he was lacking a lot of entries with his hands. To which I feel like the kicks would have been even more effective if he could set Armin up with the hands. But I think that Armin Petrosian he stayed very composed uh, compared to what all of what Leo Roy Duncan was throwing at him and because of that composure because of him not biting on so many fakes he didn't set himself up to eat too many like fight ending shots he took all the ones to the body and he took the ones to the legs and he, he ate the ones that he knew he could eat and everything else he kind of discarded at least on the side of his defense however for his offense he stuck to the basics he picked him apart he picked the legs he, he was hitting right behind the ear multiple times i think he hurt him pretty bad once um i don't think many people noticed but he caught him right on the end of the chin and christian leo duncan was kind of like ducking down and uh, he was hurt but on my that was a really good uh, fight from him and performance very very composed i'm interested to see him fight in the top 15 i know he was calling that one out and i think that you kind of have to give it to him that is a middleweight fight i'd be very interested in seeing him fight a chris curtis a andre muniz a brandon allen or even like a, a kelvin gaslam i think that's another good fight for kelvin gaslam if he's not moving down to welterweight for him to see where he's at and to make his adjustments needed to go ahead and start this run back to the title right but I also think it's a very tough fight for him, and I think it's a very tough fight for Armin Petrosian as well. It's good to see where he's at, and uh, that's a very fun fight. But where, where do y'all think Armin Petrosian goes from here on out? Let me know in the comments down below, as usual. But with that being said, we move on. Now, the last fight we're going to talk about is Armin Saryukin versus Joaquim Silva. So Armin Saryukin takes him down round one. Uh, Joaquim Silva didn't have too much for him in that regard he uh, sorry you can was able to strike with him he was able to to take him down he was able to do a lot of good work on the ground and then round two came Joaquim Silva started touching him more than he was touching getting touched on the feet and he started it seemed like the momentum was starting to shift he actually ended up hurting Armin Saryukin pretty badly but then gave him his hips I mean if you hurt a guy like that Joaquim Silva if you hurt a guy like that and you he shoots in on you i just think that there was a big error in his wrestling defense i just think that he maybe it was a mixture of fatigue and a mixture of not knowing what to do or not having the right instincts or habits um maybe he was surprised to have heard him and he just kind of got lost in the moment i don't know what it really was but i think that he really could have capitalized on that i thought armin sir Yugen was in big trouble and with a guy like joe kim silver in front of you it should have been over but he was able to take him down joe kim silver closed his guard for some reason to keep him down um and the round ended and then the third round happened and armin so you can took him down he got him in terrible positions and ended up finishing the fight called out islam i want to see that fight again but of course he doesn't deserve it yet he beat an unranked guy i know all these top 15 guys aren't trying to fight him and that's why he was it's kind of frustrated and it's calling for it but against a guy like michael chandler or a guy like benil daryush that those are some very interesting fights michael chandler i still think is gonna fight conor mcgregor i don't think that one's done yet i haven't heard too much news on that so if y'all know what's going on with that in particular then let me know without spoiling the ultimate fighter okay please but i think that he could very easily beat a guy like michael chandler i'm not saying that it's an easy fight but i do think that it's a very good possibility and good chance that he can and a guy like Benil Daryush <laughs> Daryush wow fighting Gamrot then Charles then now he's gonna fight so you can just three killers that he's he's going through murderers row that lightweight division is murderers row but I think I like that fight too I think that that's a very fun fight and I don't know how Armin does in that one so that's very interesting to me as well However, where do you guys think Armin Saryukin should go from here on out? I think he definitely deserves a top 5 opponent, but who do y'all think he actually fights next? Do y'all think he gets Michael Chandler? Do y'all think he gets Benil Daryush? Usually they line up people with wins with people with wins and losses with losses. But when you're at the top, anything can happen, right? So what do y'all think happens in that fight? But guys, thank you for tuning into this video. Thank you for watching the recap of UFC Fight Night, Vittori vs. Cannoneer. Let me know your comments down below. Tell your friend to tell a friend that your boy Noah has a YouTube channel and that is the best. 
and a Nate YouTube channel on the block. However, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And y'all stay safe and stay blessed. Peace.